How do you do? And welcome to Mr. C's presentation on comparing decimal size. Don't worry, this stuff is easy. All right, I'm not going to get into kind of the thinking or the uh, the image that decimals put into your head yet, because I want to talk about fractions first. Uh, and, and, and I haven't done that yet. So I just want to really teach you a nice two-step process for how to look at some decimals and know in your head which one's bigger right off the bat, okay? So let's go ahead and dive right into this and ask the question that we always ask, why do I need to know this? And there's a couple good reasons. It's gonna help you to organize things. So if you can look at decimals and you know which one's bigger, which one's smaller, you can, you can put them in order, which is nice. Uh, you can actually use that in real life. Uh, it's gonna help you to make quick estimations. So when you're adding money together uh, or when you are uh, adding, uh, you know, like uh, directions for recipes, when you're doubling and tripling recipes and things, knowing how to, how to estimate decimals uh, is nice because it kind of helps you to realize what you need, um, if that made any sense. And then finally, I think one of the most practical applications is money. Uh, if you can look at decimals and know which one's bigger, then you know when you're dealing with more or less money. Uh, it's got a lot of it's got a lot of real world application when you're playing with cash, which you all are gonna do someday. So let's get right into this and let's do it. Uh, we're just going to uh, do a couple of problems and show which decimal is larger than the other. So we're gonna it says compare decimals below to show which one is larger by writing greater than or less than. Okay, so we're just gonna look right at this first problem here. <laughs> 13.99, or if you know how to read that, 13 and 99 hundredths. If you don't know how to read decimals, you're watching the wrong lesson, you should already know how to do that. Uh, and then the second one is 14 and 1 hundredth. All right, here's rule number one, or step number one in a two-step process for figuring out which decimal is larger. Step one, check for whole numbers, okay? We're gonna look and see the whole numbers first. Ignore the decimals, all right? If there is whole numbers, okay? If there is whole numbers in this problem, you look at those first and ignore the decimals. 13, 14. Which one's larger? 14, boom. You don't even have to look at the decimals. That's the answer. I'll do it in, uh, I'll do it in green so that you can see it better. Okay, that is the answer. 14 is larger than 13. It doesn't matter what comes after the decimal point on either side, okay? Because 14 is always gonna be larger than 13 and a piece. And that's all the decimals are really, is just pieces, all right? So that's it, that's the answer. You don't have to go any further. You don't have to think about anything else. Kinda cool, huh? Okay, so let's go on to the second problem. <laughs> Notice how I didn't even look at that 0, 1, and that 9, 9, okay? Here's the second problem, 0 0.099, or if you know how to read that, 99 thousandths, and 1 tenth is the other problem. Okay, so this is where we're gonna get into step two. All right, assuming that there's no whole numbers, all you're gonna do is look at place values from left to right, okay? So starting in the tenths, place. You're just going to look at the tenths place for starters. Okay, <clears throat> are, are one of those digits bigger? Well, in this one, in this number, we have a zero in the tenths place. And in this number, we have a one in the tenths place. Is one of those digits larger? Yes. So stop right there. That's your answer. That's it. That's it. One is larger than zero, right? So that's it. Those nine, not that nine hundredths and nine thousandths doesn't even matter. Okay, if you think about it, or if you know anything about decimals, and you should, you can add zeros here, right? That doesn't change it at all. Okay, so this one tenth is larger than these ninety-nine thousandths all put together. That's the answer. Okay, we have our answer right there. Okay, we don't have to go any further. Ignore the nines. Ignore the zeros. Zero is smaller than one. Therefore, the alligator, that's how I like to think about it. I teach my kids, right? Think about the greater than or less than symbol as a little alligator, right? Nom, 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 nom. And he eats nom, 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 the larger uh, the larger side, right? So he's going to eat one-tenth before he eats 99 thousandths. OK? 
Okay, so let's try that rule one more time because I know it could be a little confusing. All right, we're gonna practice it on this last problem. So here we go. Okay, we're gonna compare digit by digit. Okay, because look, there's no whole numbers, right? I've checked for rule number one, there's no whole numbers. So then I just move place value by place value. So let's start at the tenths. Here we go. One and one. Is one of those larger? No, they're equal. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Two and two. Is one of those larger? Nope, they're the same. So we move to the next place value. The thousandths place. Three and zero. Is one of those larger? Yes. Which one's larger, three or zero? Three. So the alligator is going to eat that number. Okay, this number is larger than this number. That's it, that's the answer. That four doesn't even matter. We don't even, we stop right here. It doesn't matter if this says nine, 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 nine. Look, this can be nine, 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 nine. It doesn't matter. This number is gonna be larger. We can just procedurally go down these digits one at a time until we get to a larger one and that number is larger, period. End of story, this is the correct answer. You can stop right there. Okay, and we'll get into some of the theory behind this when we start talking about fractions and then relating them to decimals. But for now, if you're just looking to answer this and just know which decimal is larger, this is the easiest way to do it. Okay? All right. If you need to back this up and check it out again, or if you, or, or if you want to write down these two rules, these two steps, I think that's a good idea. Uh, but for now, we're going to go into what we learned. So we learned a few things today. First... We learned comparing decimal sizes is a one or two step process. Write that down uh, and reference it when you're actually doing problems like this. Okay, secondly, uh, it's easy if you're careful, right? Now, if you start getting confused and start looking at the number and saying, oh, which one has more digits? So that one must be bigger. No, that's not always true. Follow the steps, right? Look at the place values one at a time. Check for whole numbers first. If you do that carefully, you will get the answer correct every single time. Uh, and then finally, this is going to tie into fractions. So when we're looking at decimals, we can be thinking about fractions. And I feel like that puts an image in my mind about the size of a decimal when I can relate it to fractions. And we're going to do that shortly after we start to learn about fractions. Uh, and, and maybe you already have. Uh, uh, but I will be shooting a lesson on that shortly. So um, I hope that this helped. We're going to try it. I want you to try these three problems. So it's going to be the same deal, right? Back it up and check out those two steps if you need to. Write a greater than or less than symbol. Have the alligator eat the larger number for the following three problems. 0 0.11, 0 0.099, or 11 hundredths and 99 thousandths. One and one thousandth, or 9,999 ten thousandths. Whoa, that's some next level decimal place value there. Or finally, the last problem I want you to try is 442 thousandths or 45 hundredths. Okay, try to figure this out. Uh, ask a teacher to check your work. Ask your mom or your grandma or your grandpa or your aunt or your uncle or somebody who knows what they're doing to check your work for you. Okay, um, practice, practice, practice. Become masters at this skill uh, so that you can... Uh, move on to bigger and better things. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.